hasta Sacramento. When Freedom's sons were on the march in California, it was his march. To the followers of Cesar Chavez, protesting the suffering of migrant workers, he said, when your children and grandchildren take their place in America, though you may be old and bent from many years of labor, no man will stand taller than when you say, I was there. I marched with Caesar. And he was there to share with Caesar the triumph of the march, the breaking of his fast, and the benediction of a cause that couldn't wait. California's San Joaquin Valley holds some of the richest farmland in the United States. Yet those who work the vineyards live in poverty. In 1966, a few of them set out for the state capital, 250 miles away. Hasta Sacramento. Hasta Sacramento. The marchers want to dramatize a local labor dispute. A strike has been called against the growers of California grapes. By the time they reach Sacramento, the crowd numbers 10,000, and the nation remembers a forgotten minority. The Spanish word for strike, huelga, echoes in the pleasant valleys where most of the nation's grapes are grown. Huelga! My fellow workers, come into the fold of unionism and help bring the agriculture workers into the fold of unionism. The agriculture workers... Each day, strikers stand on the highway trying to persuade others to leave the fields and join them. Those who do can easily be replaced. An endless supply of cheap labor is available just across the Mexican border. How long have you stabbed on your fellow workers? Cesar Chavez, a disciple of Gandhi, leads the strikers. That's the problem right there. Well, yeah, you guarantee me that I'll sell a box of grapes uh, for, uh, for uh, and so I can make a profit and pay you $2 an hour? We'll make a deal. $3 an hour, $5 an hour. I don't care what you want, but you guarantee me enough when I sell a box of grapes that I can pay you that much. The farm owners say he has filled his people with impossible dreams about the wages an agricultural economy can support. I think it's about time to give us a chance to stand up and give us a little decent and our pay and our wages and our well, decisions. We're paying all we can afford. Uh, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think you do. You just speak truly. My, you come and look at my bank account. You probably got more money in the bank than I have right now. No, I can't. What do you think of the idea of a union for farm workers? Well, I think it's uh, ridiculous. Why do you say that? Well, I, so I won't go into that with you. You ask me what I think. This is what I think. Uh, I will say this. Farm wages in the last 12 months right in this area has increased from $1.10 to $1.60 an hour. Isn't that because of the strike? No. That's nothing whatever to do with it. What is that because of? I, I'm not going to go on into these questions with you. What, what other question? Uh, now, do you think that without a union, the farm workers can improve their condition and, and create better? It has been done right here, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Is this camp evidence of that? This camp has greatly improved in the last year. Mm -hmm. Would you want Since to live? I have been here. Would you want to live in this I camp? I wouldn't live here. You know, you're being very impudent. What I, I want to live here. This is, I call, an impudent question. By the end of the year, Chavez has won a small but symbolic victory. One of the growers capitulates. 
He signs the first labor contract in the history of American farming. 